Oh man, am I gonna get in trouble for this again? Why venting is a bad idea by Healthy Gamer GG. This guy's a doctor, right? From a doctor licensed in the US. Okay. I swear I talked about this before. Did I not? I remember talking about this very specific topic and everyone told me that I was retarded. And I literally said this exact same thing. Is a bad idea. I have talked about this before. I have 100% talked about this. And people said I was stupid. Now this sort of came to my attention recently when I've noticed that there's an increasing trend of content creators to like vent about what's going on. Yeah, because it's good clicks. It's amazing clicks. That's why people want the drama. Like influencers and stuff kind of do this stuff. They're like, yeah, you know, like life is so hard. Like this, I'm going through this, I'm going through this. And everyone is like, oh my God, like this guy's so brave. Dude, why is that? Probably because I don't have a PhD. So what, like I, I say something and everyone says I'm stupid. I'm a stupid halfwit. A doctor says literally the exact same thing and it's genius. Like this girl is so brave, like so great. Like people are like sharing their feelings and stuff. And then it also does something really cool, right? Because we tend to do a lot of what other content creators do. So if they start buying this thing or playing this video game, then I'm going to start buying that thing or playing that video game. Uh -huh. right? That's how the creator economy runs. And so this is also really great because once like content creators. So this guy does videos, right? On like gamer health, I guess. Is that the whole thing? Like mental health and physical health for gamers. And we you know we're probably lacking in both. I know I am. Share their mental health struggles. Like we're all inspired to share the same right yeah this is great like this is a big part of what we do in this community right the problem is that like this doesn't really work out well kind of scientifically and so like let me tell you all what i'm talking about this kind of reminds me of a situation where let's say i'm in a room uh -huh. and i feel really uncomfortable on the inside because i'm full of gas right and then what i I know exactly what that's like. The other day I was, I was so full of gas and like, I just, I, I had no release, man. What I end up doing is I like, I got to let out the badness. Yeah. So I got to literally vent the mm -hmm. gas. So I end up farting and then yep. everyone's like, wow, like, look at this person. Like farting is so stigmatized, you know, like we're not allowed to fart, but everybody farts and then everyone else is like, yeah, like I'm inspired. Let me vent my gas. Well, I mean, you're supposed to go outside. And I'm in this room where this one person has farted and everyone has started clapping. And then everyone else is like, you know what? I'm going to fart too. I need to fart too. And then they all start farting. See, now now the entire restaurant smells like shit you know what i mean like like this is not a good solution and then before you realize that you are in a room where everyone is passing gas and so each individual person feels a little bit better but you are in a room that smells literally like shit and this is what the internet has become like right yeah we all agree that like it's become a cesspool of venting with like no one doing anything about it so i'm all for sharing your feelings as a psychiatrist you should share it okay if you have like negative feelings right if you're upset about okay and i said this before okay i'm not saying keep it to yourself not what i'm saying at all i never said keep it to yourself you know contain your feelings keep it to yourself and never talk about it that's not what i'm saying you have to vent towards very specific people so you have close friends who are your tanks in life when you have a friend that's a tank you offload that pain to them and then they offload their pain to you you share in that joy and that suffering together because you're friends random people on the internet are not a good place to diffuse all of your shit it is not because all you're doing is spreading negativity into the world because you you send it out there everyone is more pissed off because of it i slightly disagree says of course you do as a content creator we even help content creators with that kind of thing we've got you know programs where are you gonna pull some like just be a man Man shit julio i swear to god dude we've supported over 500 content creators to vent their feelings and then do something about it because that's really what venting is about so let's take a quick look at why psychiatrists and therapists are all for venting so when someone comes into my office right and they start venting about something i'm gonna tell you the truth okay guys someone needs to say it someone needs to say it and it's gonna be me today a lot of therapists they don't really give a shit about you they're not your friend. I know you might seem like the therapist is your friend, but they're paid to be your friend. They don't actually give a shit about you. What they care about is the solution to your problem because that's what gets them the money and gets you sedated and out of the way so they don't have to deal with your menhara, right? So that's why they're like, take some meds, take take this meds and then just shut up. You know what I mean? Like they they don't care. They really don't. Maybe, maybe you know, I'm not saying all. Maybe there's some that like really do care. 
there might be a couple out there that are like really, really good therapists and they really do care about you, but they're not your friends. They, they, they want you to vent because it gets it out. It gets it out of, of your system. And you know, you, you pass on the shit to someone else. If I'm, in my opinion, a good psychiatrist, it doesn't end with the venting. The venting is a, right? So let's understand this. So like when I'm filled with negative emotion, it can be very hard for me to see clearly. So if I go and I talk to a therapist or a psychiatrist, I vent that negative emotion. But then yes. as a psychiatrist- Yes, venting, venting does make you feel better in the short term. It is, it is an, it is basically like, you have like this container of stress, right? And it fills up with all of the shit that happens in your life, you know? You, you know, and that's, you know, everybody has times where everyone has times where something, like, like, you know, they have a string of bad things happen. There's nothing you can do about that. That's that's what it is to be alive. And that's again, that's what your friends and your family are there for. Your friends and your family are there to help you to, to help prop you up and carry you during those really bad times. But it's not the place for random ass people. Random the random ass people don't have the context. They don't have the context and they don't they don't know enough about you in order to like actually properly protect you from that stuff. Like, what are you doing? Like why why are you like what are they are you just gonna like read the comments or like oh feel bad? better man like what the fuck like therapist hopefully what they're doing is they're not looking for you to come back week after week after week just to vent whatever is going on in your particular day what they're hopefully doing is venting so that you can start to do things about what you're unhappy with mm -hmm. right so as a psychiatrist when someone comes in and says oh my partner is like not loving and they're abusive and they're this or they're that or they have a drinking problem or whatever so i'll like validate them for a while i'll talk to them about wow that sounds genuine <laughs> Ah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the raid. What's up? You got, what's up, everybody? How's it going? It's really very difficult, and it sounds like thank you, you really again. Huh? I person. really appreciate it. Thank you. And at the same time, like they can really turn into a real monster when they've been drinking. Like that must be so hard for you. So we, as psychiatrists, this is why we do this, right? So we actually like speed up the venting process through validation. Let's get this shit moving. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why your life is so hard. I'm gonna validate, 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 and then 100 minutes of venting turns into 30 minutes of venting. And is the psychiatrist what I do as a say okay now we're what, what are we going to do about it? what we do the reason we encourage venting and the reason we use validation is this, is to decompress that emotion is it that bad I, I mean am i am i wrong it seems kind of bad to just validate people but i guess i guess i guess it's like what he said he's just doing it to speed it up maybe that's like the reason but like i don't know i feel like that could is it just me it seems like that could actually have a negative effect you know what i mean like i i feel like that that would actually like entrench entrench a bad idea in your mind you know what i mean like i don't know that's how it feels like to me uh thanks for the follow uh devo and uh oxy uh kuta and uh prince shadowfire thanks so much you guys thank you so you can take appropriate action the problem with venting is that it's a form of emotion focused coping and the problem with emotion focused coping is that over time it doesn't actually lead to good things so let's take a quick look at venting and understand what it is and how it works okay so venting is a form of something called emotion focused coping and here's what we know about a fo emotion focus so this is a uh, uh, from a paper about maladaptive coping mechanisms developing in childhood so children you can you can't tell a person who's crying that they aren't sad or you shouldn't be sad i mean wait what, what does it have to do with, I, I, I don't i don't know what that has to do with with that i don't know facing chronic and uncontrollable stress uh, less often cope by actively attempting to solve problems and managing their emotions okay so validating their feelings yes but validating someone's feelings is different different than than validating like the situation that they're in and the actions that they take you know what i mean like yeah i don't, I don't know i don't know i mean i guess it depends right uh it depends it wasn't really defined um in what he said uh davy thanks for the gifts of tahana thank you thank you so much thank you davy it's so nice of you active attempts to intervene in uncontrollably stressful situations yeah davy thanks for the gift to hop to thank you social outcomes so what does this mean thank you this so much thank when you you're a child growing up fix a problem like your parents are fighting and they're going to get divorced it doesn't end well. Instead, what children learn how to do is manage stress through acceptance. They don't de tend to do a whole lot of cognitive reframing, but they tend to focus on their emotions, right? Mm -hmm. So I can't fix mom or dad because that's not going to happen. What I can do is make myself feel better by playing a particular video game. And so, oh yeah, I know all about that. I used to, I used to PVP people and I used to, I used to gank people in Terran Mills. It made me feel really good about myself. Like I would just be sitting there and I would just cold, I would cold blood ambush somebody that was uh that was farming some mobs and i would just i would smack them i'd give them the the, the cold blood ambush insta kill felt really good and to find is that this form of coping emotion focused coping where i can't fix the outside world i can just fix my emotions it works the problem is that this pattern of findings 
reliance on an efficacy of avoidance, right? So the problem is that when we focus on avoidance of the problem, which is what emotion-focused coping is, uh -huh. it actually works. The problem is that it doesn't work for very long. So however, while adaptive for chronic stress, reliance on avoidance does not equip children to cope with all the circumstances they will encounter in life and places them at risk for mental health problems. Yo, is that why I don't like seeing people and hanging out with people? And I get panic attacks when there's a lot of people around? Is that why? So what does this mean? This means that basically we know that emotion-focused coping or venting is effective if you can't do anything about the problem. Because when there's nothing you can do, all you can do is vent. Mm -hmm. Hey, just a quick note. A lot of people will ask us, what do I do next? And that's why we built Dr. K's Guide. It's a comprehensive resource that distills over 20 years of my ex both as a monk and as a psychiatrist. Wait, what? What? Did he say monk? Distills over 20 years of my experience, both as a monk and as a psychiatrist. He's a monk? Wait, what? What's the lore behind this? Wait a minute. He's a monk? Like, what level? And it's designed in a way that's tailored to fit your needs. So if you're interested in better understanding your mind and taking control of your life, check out the link. Holy below. crap, he spent seven years in India studying to be a monk, says Sen Game. Really? Dan, do you need multi-classing? Here's what we know about the science of emotion-focused coping. As kids learn to be avoidant because they can't fix the problem, it actually leads to more problems later in life. Because uh -oh. as you grow up, your ability to do things actually increases. If all you've ever done is vent or manage your emotions instead of actually fixing problems, it starts to create more problems in life. I think I'm fine. Why do I got to hang out with people? And why do I got to hang out with people? Why can't we just play hell divers together? You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't need to go. I don't need to go out. I don't need to go to the movies. I don't need to go to the mall. Do malls even still exist? And so it can be adaptive if you have no control. But as your control increases, it becomes more maladaptive. And so this is why we got to be careful about because with a psychiatrist, it can work really well. But when we do it on our own, it creates all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. So as we look at venting, we begin to see there's another key problem with it, which is that the purpose of venting is to get rid of our negative emotions. And this is the main thing that we need to understand. The most powerful motivators of our behavior are actually negative emotion. When you okay. get incredibly angry, it is easy to act. When you feel very, very ashamed of your appearance, it's very hard for you to leave the house. And you may say, but hold on a second. Doesn't that make my life hard? No. What is the shame actually motivating you to do? It is a very powerful motivator to stay home. Is it because I'm a nerd? And so this is why there's kind of an interesting balance with venting, because what tends to happen with people who is that they vent about the problem, but they never actually do anything about it. And you may know people in your life who are like, who have this almost habitual way of venting. It may be a mom or dad or sister or whatever who are constantly griping about. Yeah, it's called bitching. I like that term more. Oh my God. It's more to the point. Life is hard this way and this way and this way. Oh my God, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And then they never end up doing anything about it. Because if you really pay attention, correlation between how much you bitch about something and how little you actually do about dude i have so i have dude i have so much trouble being friends with like girls because like every time like one of my friends like one of my girlfriends is like leaflet i have a problem this this and this and i'm like okay well like you know you can fix that with this and this and this they get really mad at me you know what i mean they get they get mad they get like really angry they're, they're, they're like and they don't want to talk to me anymore yeah i'm not good at that dude I'm not good at that. And the reason for that is very simple, neuroscientific. It is as we vent the negative emotion, we- It's like easier for me to be fr friends with dudes because like, like if dudes do that and I tell them, I tell them that they're just like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like I don't have the same problem and I don't know, like I'm not trying to be like, I, I don't know, man. Like, can I even be sexist against like my own sex? But like, I'm not trying to be sexist or anything, but it's just my experience has been like, it's mostly girls that have that problem. Actually disable our motivation which is why it works if I'm a child in an abusive household because I can't fix anything anyway. But then it sabotages me later in life when I am able to fix things. But instead, I keep on leaking out my emotional energy. And there is even a more subtle... Dude, it's so easy, guys. If you want to like, if you want to get rid of your emotional energy, just, just frag people. It's so easy. You just go into a game and you just click heads. It's so easy. If you want, if you want to be like, if you want to vent even faster, you can troll people too. 
You know what I mean? Like it's it's great. No problem. You could Life. you could do a little like uh you know you could do you could do a little teabag like that adds that relieves so much stress. Like if I shoot someone in the face and then I teabag them after, oh god, it's like it's like just coming off of it's like evaporating off of off of my shoulders. You know, it's great. Which is something that we're gonna learn from the yogic tradition, which is something called a vasana. So as we mentioned earlier, we know that there are these people who will vent about the same thing over and over and over again. Uh huh. And this is particularly insidious, not just because of the motivation. But because... I'm not gonna lie though, I also have this problem. It's mostly because I don't know how to fix it. Like I, I have I have certain issues and I just I don't actually know how to fix them. You know what I mean? And it's like I've tried a lot of things. It, it's because it's for stuff that's really arcane. Like there's like a couple things in life that are like they're incredibly arcane and it's really hard to actually pin down the solution to it. And and those things really frustrate me. They frustrate me more than anything. Because it's like I, I don't even know like I don't even know. It's so complicated. The solution is so complicated and so like rooted in like a very specific it's different. The solution is different for every person. And because of that, it drives me up a wall. The mental habit it, it creates. Now, this is what a vasana is. So to illustrate this, I'm going to give you all an example. So I had a patient who came into my office. I was their eighth or ninth, 48 years old. So they've been in therapy since they were 15 or 16. And what they would do is they'd come into my office and they'd vent about their day. I'm sad because of this and this thing went wrong and this thing went wrong. Mm -hmm. And I was like a second year or third year psychiatry resident. So I was just like, I just finished two years of training. So I'm like, okay, this is what psychotherapy is. I'm here to listen to people talk about how sad they are. Like that's me being supportive, right? And then a couple months went by and then I was like, bro, is this helping? And he's like, what do you mean? Is it helping? And I was like, is this actually helping you? And he's like, well, dude, I feel like so many therapists are like that. They literally just like listen to you, bitch. Like, yeah, okay. You know, like that's, that sucks. It's going to get, you know, it's fine. And then there's like friends too that do this, right? Like how many of you guys, are, I mean, I'm sure you know of a friend that does this. Yo, thanks for the follow, Robbie. Uh, you know, you've got friends that do this. They're like, they're like, everything's going to be okay, man. Just relax. Everything's going to be cool. It's like, you don't fucking know that. You know what I mean? Like, oh well, God, like, dude. Drives me up I mean, a like, wall. Do you feel better than you did six months dude, ago? Dude, the last, dude, I'm going to tell you about the last therapist I had. This is, this is actually, this is actually true. So my mom, this is back when I was like, I was like kind of um I was, I was going through a lot back then and uh my mom was really worried about me and so she took me she took me to uh, um she took me to a therapist right and i'm talking to this therapist right I, i'm talking about how like you know all, all the things that upset me and so you know i'm, I'm, I'm talking about it. like she's like asking me so so what's the problem so i start talking about my problems right and she goes dude i swear to god dude she says to me why are you upset you have such a cool job like you have such a cool job you you know you you uh you make games and then you like play games and people watch you play games. My daughter would kill to have that job. And I was just like, I was like, bro, what the fuck? I never went again. Like, I swear to you, like every single therapist I've had has been like this. You, you got your money back? And of course not. Are you fucking kidding me? You get your money back from a freaking doctor? Yeah, right, man. But like every single time it's been like that. And like, I don't know if I just have bad RNG or it's just, I, I, I've kind of made an association, you know, like that happens like one time, two times, three times. And now I'm just like, okay, there's just all like that you know what i mean like and he's like, no, I mean, my life hasn't improved at all. And he, but he's like, isn't this what therapy is supposed to be? Like, aren't I supposed to come here and like talk about my feelings? And that's when I started to realize, wait, something is going, oh, something is off here. And that's when I actually like, so usually when I don't understand something in psychiatry, I'll read psychiatry stuff, but then I also re read like yogics. And I stumbled upon this idea of a vasa. So all it took was this guy multi-classing into monk. And that gave him the insight to be a good therapist, a freaking mind priest. You know what I mean? He just, he had to, he had the multi-class into monk. Get a couple of those skills. So vasana is a mental habit. And the big problem with a mental habit is that once you start venting in a particular way, your neurons concrete about that sort of thing. You develop literally a mental habit where mm -hmm. all it takes is a tiny trigger for your mind to go through this well-rehearsed form of thinking, which frequently- Yo, is that why I throw up when I see people in, in person? So if you want to- See, my solution is I just won't hang out in person. I don't care. I don't care. Like, I, like the, the thing is, is like, like, everyone's like, Leaf Flit, why don't you like get better so you can go outside? I don't care. I literally don't, I don't care about going outside. I, I'm I'm cool playing hell divers all day and making videos and making stupid music. Like I'm fine. I'm playing D and D. I'm good with that. 
I don't need to go outside. Example of this, you can go to like- If people want to hang out with you, that's, that's their problem. That's, the, that's not my problem. Dating forums or incel war, where these are people who, let's take incels. I'm not trying to bash incels. Let's just look at what it is. So these are people who, you know, went on a couple of dates many a few, maybe a few years ago, and yet they go on the internet every single day, and they will type about how alone they are, how alone they are, how alone they are, and you can't argue with them or anything like that, but they spend hours and hours and hours in their own head thinking about how alone they are. And the really weird thing is if we sort of look at life for a second, okay? So like, let me kind of a quick example. So let's take a look at, let's understand vasana. So a vasana, a mental habit. Didn't you enjoy the eclipse? Wouldn't you have enjoyed it more if you were not scared of the weebs? No, because the weebs were not at the eclipse. Julio, there were no weebs at the eclipse. The eclipse was just fine. I was in the woods. There was a couple of fishermen. That's it. There's a couple, a couple of fishermen, like a nice old family. That's it. There wasn't like, there wasn't, there, it wasn't like I went to an anime convention, you know. Uh, thanks for the sub. Thank you, Iridium Wings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, here's the tricky thing. If we're looking at people like incels or someone who gets, so what you've got is you've got one kind of exposure. And once you trigger the, ex, once the exposure triggers, this exposure can even be less than five seconds. So this can be something as simple as I logged onto the internet and I saw a happy couple smiling. And then this triggers a venting. And this can be like minutes. Dude, that dude, it's like that. It's like that Elliot Rogers guy, dude. You guys remember the Elliot Rogers guy? He he got so triggered. He would see like he would see like a guy and a girl holding hands and it would drive him up a wall. He, that guy went freaking nuts about that. He would just vent about it. Like on on like those vlogs. And if you know people who have vasanas, you know what I'm talking about because you can trigger that pattern of Yeah, uh Elliot Rogers is yeah, he's like the um he's the guy who uh he he shot up uh Santa Barbara. He's like yeah, and like he he had like a YouTube channel and like he went freaking he went fucking psycho because like uh because of girls, really like, like I mean not because of girls, but like to him. To him it was because of girls. Obviously it wasn't the girls' fault. Um but it it, it it drove him insane to see like girls like like holding hands with guys and like it, it it like triggered him and like he went he went fucking insane uh was his father was fbi or was that someone else uh i i think that's someone else i think this guy's father was working in the movie industry i believe thinking and they will say the same his journals online so yeah his videos his videos are up on were up on youtube i think they still are up on youtube actually and you can kind of see them he rants about like really crazy stuff honestly like it was really really some next level shit you know over and over and over again right so i play the game of dota 2 maybe i'll play league of legends and sometimes something is overpowered and the moment that i see that every time i lose to this particular hero i fucking i log on to the forums and i rant this hero is so overpowered 35 minutes of my life because I played one game of Dota. Because yeah, I had, to, I had to deal with people like him. Because I saw this particular person and then now I'm off track. I see someone else playing that that person, that, that particular hero. I start ranting and raving. The Vasana triggers, the mental habit triggers. And uh -huh. the real problem with triggering Vasanas is a five second exposure can cost you 30 minutes. And now let's look at what see, our- See, but for me, I make songs. I make like stupid memes and stuff, I guess. It's like similar, but like I just, I just, I do stupid show or I make like a D&D &D campaign about something that I hate. Like I-, I I, I, it's something like that. Life looks like if we have a bunch of asanas. So five second trigger, 30 minutes. Another five second trigger, 30 minutes. Another five second trigger, 30 minutes. Uh -huh. Another five second trigger, 30 minutes. And you'll notice this if you go on these places that are kind of like safe spaces on you the You waste internet, a lot of time. It's a bunch of people constantly venting. Yep. And so even though my exposure in life has only been 20 seconds, two negative things, I have created two hours of negativity in my yep. mind. Mm -hmm. This is what a vasana is. It is a mental habit. And the more that we vent, the more our mind gets into the, the more that we get into the habit of venting. It's because it feels good. It's like a drug, right? Like when you vent and you like, you talk shit or whatever, like it feels really good. Easier it is for our mind to go to that particular place. And then all we need is a single trigger to knock us off on this kind of rant, which I, I don't know if y'all had this, but like, like, you know, my mom is like this, where she has like particular rants that she likes to go on. I have family members that have particular rants that they like to go on. Even I like to go on particular rants. These are all vasanas. Uh -huh. And the real problem with I rant to Julio all the time. Decompress our negative emotional energy trains our mind continuously negative thoughts. That's what venting is. If we never go about fixing the problem, because then what happens? The circumstance is here, triggers the venting. Okay. And then no emotional energy. And then I don't. I'm surprised she doesn't 
doesn't hate me because I always call you mean me? Oh no, because I'm fine with that. That's kind of what I mean though, right? Like, like, it, like I'm okay with that. I'm okay with like, I mean, you're trying to help me find a solution, right? I just can't see it. So it's like, I, I don't get mad at you for that. That's why I still talk to you about like problems, you know, Julio? Cause it's like, it's like, I know you're gonna like, okay, listen, the most valuable friends that you're gonna have are friends that can actually like help you figure out what the problem is. Those are the most valuable friends. The ones that, that are not gonna talk to you about like super fun stuff, they're gonna like, they're gonna do something that is a pain in the ass, but it gets you on the right track. Those are the best friends. Actually change anything. So the most valuable the friends. The circumstance triggers again and again and again and again. And then my mind gets better and better and better at venting, 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 venting until all I'm doing is farting all day and never actually i encourage y'all to be very careful about venting and here's the right way to do it the first is if you work with a professional hopefully you find one that is helping you vent for the sake of actually doing something and even if you're not working with a professional you can do that yourself so here's the main question i've got for y'all when you vent what do you do to f the problem after you vent uh -huh. if the answer is absolutely nothing now you know why you're fucking constantly venting because you're never actually doing anything to fix it Next yeah, but that's time. hard, man. Fixing problems is hard. <laughs> Bitching about it is easy. Yeah, you know, it's easy and it feels good, but it's hard. It's hard to actually like fix it, you know? Do something about it. Do something, even if it's minuscule, if it's insignificant. Spend five minutes actually addressing, minimum of five minutes addressing the problem that you're venting. And you may say, but there's nothing I can do about it. Stop and think for a second. Oh, my boss doesn't like me. I'm venting about my boss, venting about my boss, venting about my boss. Why doesn't your boss like you? Because they give me, they criticize me. What if it's, I mean, what do you, what do you do about it? If you're like, why does my boss doesn't like, why does the boss not like me? It's cause you're gay. It's like, well, what do you do about it? <laughs> I mean, like, I guess you get a new job. Maybe you could do slightly better at your job. Do you think that could make a difference? No, I've tried. I guess that is a solution. Go get a different job. Yeah. That it doesn't work. That is a vasana. You see how quickly it jumps up? No, I've tried it. It doesn't work. I've tried it. It doesn't work. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Oh, I see. You tried it. How many times? I've tried it a million. Sometimes it's true though. What the fuck? A million times. Sometimes the solution is different for different people. It never works. Chances are you've tried it a couple of times and it doesn't work. And then you've started to form a vasana of when I try to <sighs> they don't work. And then you get stuck in this particular way. So now we get to the vasana. This is the third thing that you can do. Observe the mental habit of your mind. Observe that when you are in a particular situation, all it takes is a ch and then watch how your mind, as soon as you hit the play button, it's like an unskip ad where now that we've fucking strapped ourselves in and we've started this video thanks for the follow we're gonna thank to you sit through 15 minutes of bs and just notice wow look at my mind this is all you need to do to melt a vasana is observe the automaticity so wow okay. now my mind is off on that track now my mind is off on the track now my mind is off on the track like let let is in literally like let it run its course and watch it and don't stress about it now if you guys want some of these techniques of how to observe and things like that i definitely recommend you check out our meditation guide we'll teach you about a lot of this mental training but all you need to do is observe the vasana so at the end of the day you all need to be a little bit careful about venting venting can be absolutely healthy if it proceeds so this is actually different this is actually different than what i thought to me i i, I think i think venting is bad on like like I, I think venting on twitter is bad because it is literally spreading negativity are bad and there are negativity that has substance behind it as in like uh i think this is a bad thing and like you know we need to fix it like i think that's fine complaining on twitter it it literally it, ha it has no benefit all it does is spread poison on the internet and that's what i'm i, I don't think that's a good idea helps stabilize you because too much negative emotion is overwhelming we want to modulate that negative emotion down dude i know right we still have enough emotional energy to motivate to act this is what a therapist not the same so thing it's do it's the same thing astra it's the same thing if instead you just vent for the sake of venting and then you vent again and vent again vent again you're forming a mental habit and then the real problem with that mental habit is that mental habit will make it harder for you to do something because now your body has a habituated response when this problem happens, how do I deal with it? I bitch about it. So now it becomes harder and harder and harder. It's kind of like, you know, once you train yourself to be right-handed, hard to start writing with your left hand. So once your I did mind it. trains with a particular vasana of well, the other way, I'm but deal with yeah. the problem, I'm just going to bitch about it. It becomes harder and harder and harder to work with your left hand to actually do something about your problem. So be careful about venting and observe your vasana. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good video. I, th I think for the most part, I, I think there are a couple of cases cases i think there are a couple cases in which like again the solution isn't as clear-cut and it makes it a lot harder um 
for a lot of solutions, so I'd say like 90, 95% of the solutions in life are pretty straightforward. I don't know. Watch out for leaflets better, going on the warpath. Exercise, save money, build some skills. Like, like it, it's all, it, a lot of it is pretty simple. I think some stuff is kind of more complicated than that. You know what I mean? But this was a pretty good video. And uh, so like, this guy does a lot of mental health stuff, apparently. I kind of, I should check it out more. Honestly, I, I, I really should. I'll link it in uh, chat. Give the video a thumbs up if you are, uh, you think that venting is, is a bad idea.